Hey everyone, this is Zach here. Today I'm going to walk through setting up an external inventory plugin inside of AAP to use as a dynamic inventory. So as you may have noticed, if you use AAP in the past, um, the inventory source plugins available in the dropdown may not encompass what you need. So some of the common ones we see are AWS EC2, uh, Google Cloud, Compute Engine, and then Azure VMs. Uh, but you may want to go outside of that. And so the example I'm going to walk through today is Microsoft Active Directory um, as an LDAP server and pulling straight from your AD environment. So I'll walk through the step-by-step -step tutorial here. There's an article if you prefer to read through it, but I'm going to step through it manually and just give you an idea of what you need to do. So the first step is to go ahead and create a custom credential type. I have put on my doc site the actual configuration you need for this credential type. And the reason for creating is it will inject environment variables into your run that the inventory plugin expects to be there to authenticate with Active Directory. So if I go over to this link here, this is my LDAP input configuration. Um, the way I set this up, I'm gonna go ahead and copy it. I'm gonna go into my AAP instance to credential types. I'll click add, I'll call it LDAP or Microsoft AD LDAP demo and I'm gonna come into the input, which I just copied and go ahead and paste it. And then I'll go back here, I'm gonna do the same thing for the injector configuration. And these are the environment variables that I'm injecting into the run itself. And then I'll go ahead and click save there. I'll come back to the article. So now I've created my custom credential type. Now I wanna create an instance of that credential, which I'll eventually attach to my inventory source. So let's go to credentials, I'll click add, and what you should see here is the credential type that you just added would be added to this list here. So Microsoft AD LDAP demo, and I'll call this my Autodotes AD LDAP credential, Autodotes being my domain. And my server is just local in my home lab, but you can definitely use the FQDN for yours. And then 389 to just note that I'm not using LDAP S for this example. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just put in a simple username and password combo. There are alternative forms of authentication. I look at the plugin documentation to see all the details, but all the configuration options are here for you. Um, and then you can go ahead and configure them as needed. So I'm gonna click save here, or actually, let me go ahead and put cert validations ignore, and I'll click save. So now I've got my credential. Let's hop back over and see what our next step is in the article. So now we wanna go ahead and add an inventory file and sync that to our remote repository and our project in AAP. There's a couple steps here that I'm gonna walk through quickly because I've already done this. So I'm gonna hop over to my GitHub repo and show you my inventory plugin file that you'll wanna create as well. So as you can see, the first line here is important to specifying the plugin that's gonna be used to parse this inventory. And I also use the plugin name .yaml as my file name, just to be clear and consistent. Then you'll see some commented out fields here. So this is what I'm using um, the custom credential type to inject into the run. Um, and the benefit there is one, I don't have to put those values in the source control, which I could if I wanted to, but that would be dangerous. And uh, I also can have a credential that exists in AP and obfuscate the values, but still allow someone to use it if they need to sync the inventory. Uh, the next piece here is a search base. So this is an actual configuration property of the plugin itself. So I'm giving it a query to pull um, computers and the lab OU within my domain. Um, that can be you know, as complex as you want. And then there's also some properties that you can find in the documentation for grouping, um, filtering, and other more advanced options uh, to allow you to use this plugin as effectively as you can. So if I hadn't already pushed this to my remote repository, I would want to go ahead and go through the steps of you know creating that file locally, adding it to staging in my local repository, committing it, and then pushing it up to my repo. So then once I've done that, I'm gonna go back to my AAP instance, go to projects, and then I'm gonna click on my Windows Management Project, which points to my repo, um, and I'm gonna sync it, right? So if you don't do that, AAP itself 
doesn't actually know that you've pushed to the remote repository yet. So that sync allows it to pull down the latest to make sure that that new inventory file is available to me. The next step is going to be to actually create the inventory. So let's go to inventories. I'm going to click add. I'm just going to click add an inventory. I'm going to call this the AD LDAP demo inventory. And I'm going to attach it to my Autodoots organization. And that's really all I need to put there. You can put in a, a description um, to explain what this inventory is for in your instance, but it's not required. Click save there. Hop back over. And then this is really where the magic happens for this um, example is in the inventory source. So I'm going to go to sources tab, click add. And if I click source, I always want to do a source from a project for this because I'm actually going to use that inventory file that I just pushed to the repo. I'm going to call this just to be very explicit, the Microsoft ADL that plugin source. Uh, if the Microsoft AD collection is not available to you on your controller node or in your projects requirements.yaml file, uh, make sure you attach an execution environment that has the Microsoft AD collection, otherwise this will fail because that plugin won't be available. Then I'm going to attach the credential that I just created right, to inject the authentication variables that I need to connect to Active Directory. I'm going to select the project, which is Windows Management, which I added the inventory file to. I click this drop down. So you'll notice that my file that I added is not here. What the heck? That's expected um, just because Ansible didn't auto detect it is okay. I can go ahead and manually and put the name, and then I'll just click set source path. Um, this will work just fine. Uh, it just didn't auto detect it, which is which is expected here. So that's all I need to do for the inventory source configuration. So let me go ahead and save that next file and our last step here is to go ahead and sync and verify that it works so let's go back to the AP instance I'm going to click sync on this source process I'll come back to jobs over here and we'll let that inventory sync job run as you can see I did a couple project syncs which were successful um, that would be important to make sure it occurs um, if you've added a new file to your remote source and voila it was successful so how do we verify it let me go back to my inventory I'm going to go into that demo inventory I created. And if I click on hosts, well, I should see the hosts that I have configured in my Active Directory instance. Um, and for me, this is correct. I only had four computers in that search path that I gave it. Uh, I can even click on one of these if I'm interested. Um, this will pull back information from AD itself. If you can see, I got the distinguished name from Active Directory. Um, and then I automatically went and set the FQDN to the Ansible host. So I hope you enjoyed this example. Um, in the article, I note that it is important to use dynamic inventories for when you can. It just makes AAP that much more effective and avoids you know, your configuration and automation missing servers that exist um, and leaving vulnerabilities out there. And this process that I just walked through can be used with any external inventory source. So it's not um, limited to just the Microsoft.ad.l. plugin, uh, you'll obviously have to tweak it in places where, like, the custom credential type will need to match what you're trying to use. Um, but feel free to leverage this process to to take advantage of other plugins that are out there. Thanks for listening.